Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Nilanjan Mukhopadhyay and you are watching Present Past and the Future. Years ago, when I was not even a journalist, I had a chance meeting with the legendary film director Mrinal Sen. He learnt I was Probashi, meaning a non-resident Bengali with just a vague idea of my subconscious. He almost ordered me, read up about three episodes of 20th century Bengal and you will understand our psyche better. First, Bengal partition, beginning with the British attempt in 1905 and then the eventual surgery in 1947. How communalism fired this eventuality. Second, the Bengal famine of 1943, which killed millions of people and had a profound impact on the consciousness of people. And finally, the episode of turbulent Bengal of the 1960s and 1970s. It gave Bengalis the image of being romantic radicals, but there is little of the spirit now. His words brought back childhood memories at that time, stories my grandfather narrated when the family, like most others, survived on residual starch after rice was cooked. This was about a missing cousin when we visited relatives in 1970s. The story of Bengal partition was, however, learnt with the help of historian friends and the books they advised. The tragedy of division was interlaced with several instances of communal flare-up, including the Great Calcutta killing and, of course, the Noakhali tragedy. The last item on Minal Babu's reading list is extremely relevant today. We just completed an astonishing election in which the BJP won 18 Lok Sabha seats in West Bengal. The CSDS post-poll survey showed a dramatic rise in Hindu support for BJP from 21% in 2014 to 57%. On the other side, Muslims lined up behind Trinamul Congress from 40% in 2014 to 70% now. Driving the Hindus for BJP sentiment greatly is the Jai Shri Ram slogan, which had little traction in the state during the Ram Janambhumi agitation. Is communalism in Bengal an overnight phenomenon or does it have a past which we have brushed beneath the carpet? Have we lived in the illusion of West Bengal being home to revolutionary politics because the Indian Renaissance germinated in this land? I have with me Partho Ghosh, a former professor at JNU, who has written extensively on and about Bengal. His writings on identity, nationalism, migration, and statelessness have been particularly insightful. Welcome, Professor Ghosh, uh, to my program. You know, in a recent article, you have argued against two presumptions. First, that Bengalis are not communal, and second, they are non-violent. You, in that article, referred to an 1858 Tarini which you call the Virtual Anti-Muslim Manifesto. Does this mean that from the late 19th century at least, religion was the main basis of social identity in Bengal and that the so-called Hindu-Muslim bhaichara that we talk about was actually all a sham? Uh, first of all, let me thank you. Uh, before, before I... My privilege, you know, to have my you... My respond to you... Uh, couple of footnotes yeah. to what you said. One is, I am also like you, a Prabashi Bangali. I am from Bihar, probably you are from UP. I grew up in UP. Okay. Uh, this is one footnote. And the other footnote, you talked about Minal Sen. You know, I often feel that these, uh, some of these uh, film directors, mm. they make better social statements than we academics. We write volumes but cannot say anything much. But these uh, writers, you know, they often touch the chord, which we do not do. That's just a footnote I wanted to add. Uh, because I remember Minal Sen's Agdin Pratidin. Right. 
you know, the way he portrayed the tension of the lower caste, lower uh, class, uh, Bengalis in post partition Bengal, post 47 partition Bengal. Having said that, uh, let me address to your My uh, query. Yes. question, you know, that yeah. uh, communalism and Bengal yes, not as, a, as a child or till say a few years ago, I had the romantic notion about Bengal as liberal state and leftist state and where there is no possibility of any uh, communal tension, flare up or communal consciousness. Place where where yes. what is thought today, the yes. rest of India thinks yes. 50 years that's later. that's right. That's, that's right. right. And I think it's just the opposite now. What the rest of India thinks thought today. Yesterday, <laughs> thought Bengal yesterday. Thought yesterday. Bengal today. is thinking today. today. Yes, that is what I, I, I hope I'm proved incorrect, you know. We all hope so. Uh, uh, yes, when I was looking into this issue of uh, Bengali communalism, I was struck by the fact that how uh, in the mid, from the mid 8th, 19th century, there was a huge, so to say, development of consciousness for Hindu nationalism, which was not so much there in the rest of India. One reason could be that Bengal was the first state to be, you know, uh, to be exposed to English language, secular education, and things like those. As a result, a popular a class, popular a class uh, of educated people would be emerged. That, that because and, you were yes. exposed to liberal thought, you would leave obscurantism behind. That's right. But that did not happen. That didn't it happen the partly because it was British, British created also. Uh, for your information, the first book. Uh, that came in 1823 was the history of India by James Mill. Mm -hmm. James Mill had never ever visited India mm -hmm. and he could have the audacity of writing a book in 1823, History of India, and in which for the first time he talked about the periodization of Indian history, Hindu period, Muslim period and British period, mark it, not Christian period. So dividing you know, history into, yes, three into and on the basis of he never the talked about Buddhism the, actually. Right. You know, India was ruled by Buddhists for a very, very long right. time. He never mentioned. I do not say that it was motivated what he was writing. Maybe his ignorance actually. Hmm. I would say everything cannot be motivated. So, to know? get back to you know what I'm trying to understand, you know that we are actually seeing a very communal phase of politics in contemporary Bengal, you know, yes. that is what we are seeing. And we are trying to understand that this has actually a link with the past, you know, which began from the middle of the 19th century and then thereafter it became more and more worse, you know, you started having riot after riot in Bengal in different parts, right from the 1890s onward to some of the most ghastly riots, you know, that we actually see, you know. So, you know, that what we look at, you know, that, you know, Bengal was, of course, also was one of the major centers of the national movement. Uh, the Swadeshi movement, for instance, which in 1905 was also the first attempt on the part of the British to actually divide uh, Bengal on the basis of religious identity. Uh, questions which come from there that did the British de do it to appease the Muslims, to give them certain amount of, you know, a greater share of the power in East Bengal? Second is that was this also in some way targeting the Hindu Bengali elite, the so-called Bhadralok, because of the leadership position they took in the Swadeshi movement? You are talking about 1905. Between 1857 and 1905, one huge development took place in Bengal that was Hindu Mela, right. Hindu fairs, you know, which started, I think, in 1860s or something, or maybe 18 a early, bit earlier uh, than the mid, Ganesh festival yes, was started in much, Western much, India. Much, much earlier. By, uh, much Tilak. earlier. Much earlier. Okay. Hindu Mela was an annual gathering, something right. like this uh, Tablighi Jamaat or something right. like that. Right. the Tablighi Jamaat. I am not entering, but that's a different that's issue altogether. Different okay. Different. But that is. But a congregation on the basis on, of all and Hindus. that became very popular across India. It was imitated in Lahore, it was imitated in Chennai, uh, uh, those days Madras. Right. This develop, these, all these developments were taking place in Bengal. As a result, the appearance that was there with the rest of India, particularly the rest of the India's Muslims, right. was that Hindu nationalism was concentrated in Bengal. Right. 
Here one small point I want to make that in 1875 onwards we see the Aligarh movement that Muslims must get educated. We also, we also in, see you know, in three decades, you know, we also yes. see in the 1905-1906, yes. we also see one, one, the Muslim I, League coming Let out. me complete this point. Okay, and Sir, Sir, Sir Sayyid Ahmad who led the Aligarh movement that Muslims must get educated to compete with Hindus, his entire targeting was Bengali Hindus. You know, He never talked about other Hindus. If you see his uh, speech of uh, uh, 1888 in Meerut, you know, he is talking entirely as if Hindu nationalism is monopolized by the Bengalis. Right. I was struck to read that speech actually. Mm -hmm. You know, now coming uh, your question about, about 1905, 1905, you know, the Nation movement appeasing you know, the Muslim uh, elite and also an Actually, that was not that was not projected by the British that Obviously way. Obviously not. Pro projectors, so that projection was that it was Bengal was too big, yes. it is unmanageable administratively and things like that. But the point to be noted here is that if you go to Banglapedia, you know, which is published not exactly by Bangladesh government, but sponsored by Bangladesh But by the conservative yeah. section within uh, the Bangladesh. Uh, they society. entirely yeah. agree with the British, you know, exactly. interpretation of exactly. 1905. That's no. right. Uh, I have uh, also checked some of the uh, accounts from Banglapedia, you know, which actually shows a very lopsided and a very that, that's sectarian right. way of presenting that, that, the that's past. Right. That's, that's right. That, that is uh, you know, and actually in history, it is very difficult to say what is lopsided and what is not lopsided. Everybody has its own orientation of reading history. That's why I am saying that history is the most difficult subject to read actually. Now, what, uh, now, we are talking about, you know, the Swadeshi movement. We see definitely also the, the issue in the, in the Swadeshi movement that use of Hindu imagery by the leadership, to some extent it also alienated the Bengali peasantry. So, uh, Bengali Muslim peasantry, uh, would you say that, you know, that, that by the early decades of the 20th century, Bengal had come to a point where communalism in Bengal had reached a point of no return and thereafter, it was just a question of as to how long can you manage the entire tension which was there and somehow or the other prevent it from erupting into major riots. I, I wouldn't. Uh, or was there I, any collective? I would, I would prefer not to use that extreme word of point of no return. Right. There is nothing uh, like that in history actually. Uh, but I would say that the, the class conflict in Bengal got mixed up with, with the, the communal, communal conflict, identity. yes. Right. And, and that started with Cornwallis actually, his permanent settlement if you see, right. Zamindari system, so, so called. I do not, I cannot go entirely into right. those de details, but communalism and class conflict got mixed up in Bengal. And as a result, we see most of the communal rights which we see, Suranjan Das's book, you know, uh, Oxford University Press 1991, which talks about riots in Bengal. And he has enumerated of the 50, 60 riots uh, that took place between 1900 and 1950. Right. Okay. And that was, you may say it communal, you may say it class conflict, mm -hmm. you know, it, it can be interpreted both ways. And I think there is a huge interlap. Uh, in, interlocking you know, the, yes, of these two, these, two, two yeah. these issues actually. Now, point of no we, return. Yes. yes, we also see, you know, through the 1930s and the 40s, we see the rise of the Muslim League becoming the main voice of the political voice of the Muslims. Of course, there were certain, uh, you know, people who stood against the Muslim League for some time, at least Fazlul Haq, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, even though he was part of Muslim League at some point. Second thing is that you also see the Hindu Mahasabha becoming very strong, especially after Savarkar gets released from jail and Shama Prashad Mukherjee joins the Hindu Mahasabha and takes charge of uh, Hindu Mahasabha in Bengal. So, 40 has become, would you say, possibly the most important uh, decade as far as uh, yes. communalism in Bengal is concerned? Yes, I would say for various reasons actually. I would say that 40s, not exactly for ending 47, 40s and partly 50s. That was the period I find several dichotomies existed in Bengal. That is one Congress in Bengal, Congress in Delhi. There is a tension. Okay. There is a Muslim League in Bengal and Muslim League in rest of India, North Indian Muslim League. There was tension. You know. Similarly, there was a tension among the Hindu right as well. And 
towards where, the Hindu towards the where? in in Bengal. In Bengal. In in actually there was a conflict of interest between the type of things that Sam Prasad Mukherjee wanted and the type of thing that was developing in North India. In North India in, in, under, in, in, in under, leadership uh, of Savarkar, Savarkar and the and RSS others. also. There was a tension yeah. there also. Therefore, all I would say that there is a sense of Bengaliness, you know. Which was emerging there, and it is still there. You know, quite often you know, it is said. You know, you know you talk I'm about probably I'm you, yeah, mixing you know, up too not many mixing things. Up, you know? I think you no. have raised a very important point. Uh -huh. Quite often it is said. You know that there was a very strong Bag Bengali nationality which had emerged through the 1940s, which unfortunately could not go to its complete, uh, you know, logical culmination, which is a separate Bengal. As a, there was a very nascent proposal to ensure, you know, that to have an independent Bengal. Independent of Pakistan That's and right. India. That's, That's right. right. That, that who was also there. The, but I find this period must be. I am not. Uh, I have not studied myself, but I would say that this Bengali ness or so-called Bengali nationalism emergence, it is still there. I would say if you come to. In the, fact, the foundation of Bangladesh is because of this. Because Bangladesh. It, yes, it was. It was yes. essentially the and, you know and the this Bengali is my identity. Only hope actually. Bengali you, you identity. Meant, have you reached the last point or not? Right. I would say this is the only hope. There was a party, although that party was, you know, non-starter, Amra Bangla, Amra Bangali. I do not know if you remember or not. There was a party like that, Amra Bangali, were 12 crores Bengalis, and if we unite together, we'll a great nation, blah, 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 you know, that was there. But I would say that in all these different categories of thinking, there is a huge amount of Bengali identity, you know. And therefore, I would say, I, my hope is there. That even this emergence of Communal Hindu forces. right yes. in yes. Bengal will get contained. Will get contained by this element because I remember once uh, K, uh, G P Koirala said that I am not worried about communism in Bengal. It is it is Bengali communism. I know you know G P Koirala used to say right. you know. I would say therefore this Hindu communalism in Bengal will also. Take in, fact, in fact, in fact, in probably fact, where you say, you know, that your hope, you know, I think possibly if you say that if anybody asks you, you would possibly say that your reason for finding hope out of the darkening clouds in Bengal today is the 1946 uh, elections in Bengal, where the Hindu Mahasabha gets routed. Yes. It doesn't win a single seat. Yes. Shama Prashad Mukherjee is the only seat. And that too, a non-elective on the university quota seat. That's right. So, so which means that despite practice of Hindu communist politics through the late 30s and 1940s, being part of the government, not resigning during the Quit India movement, also despite that, people do not vote for the Hindu Mahasabha. You have the Great Calcutta killing, Noah Khali taking place. You have partition. Yet. When the Jansang is formed, they do not perform very credibly. Oh, well, that is, I do not election. want to go into because our time is probably limited. I do not want to go into that debate uh, right. here about the rise of left and uh, what uh, you know how it contributed to that also. Not, but uh, the point is what you are making is quite well taken, and that is what I am trying to. You didn't miss. I, you missed one point. Yes. You know that yes. is yes. Bengali language. Yes, Bengali, Bengali language. language. No, I refer to it very uh, yeah. you, know, you know obliquely. That in the Bangladesh struggle, it was actually entire thing was around yes. the Bengali language. And Bengali the language of that. is a unifying force. That does not happen in North India. North India is Urdu versus Hindi, right? Plus Islam versus uh, Hinduism. Yes. You know. But if you actually look back in Bengali history, also you will find that a certain amount of Persianization oh, of yes. Bengali and did yes. happen. You know, and Sanskritization and there is, there is from the Hindus. You know. So yes, yes, language also. Yes. You know, both the Hindus. Yes, I know. The, Several the, tensions. The, the positive yes. side yes. is that. They took away their bits from the Bengali language, but they still retain <laughs> yes, hold still of the Bengali. Bengali. Still, it is Bengali, Bengali. It is still with Bengali. a Persian touch and yeah. with a Sanskrit Persian touch. Persianized and yeah. Sanskritized yeah. Bengali. I think it's very important for us to understand that we had Shama Prashad Mukherjee and N. C. Chatterjee, members of Parliament, in the first Lok Sabha elections. Uh, what happened is that after that. You would have a situation where uh, they do not do very well for several decades. What do you think is the primary reason for it? That uh, the uh, Jansang. Yes, the Jansang. The actually, Jan, that actually Hindu Mahasabha, that is the nucleus of uh, Jansang actually, 
Hindu Mahasabha had lost its uh, glamour by, by the time the partition took place, I would say. And one character you are missing that is Devaprasad Ghosh, you know. Devaprasad Ghosh was a great ideologue of Hindu Mahasabha and he became a Rajya Sabha member also and right. he gave fiery speeches also. Right. After, and he was right hand man of uh, Samaprasad Mukherjee. No. And his writings show that there is a disillusionment with even Samaprasad Mukherjee within Bengal, right. within Bengal. And your question is again a very large canvas you are trying to draw. But this refugee movement, there is a distinction between Punjabi refugee movement and Bengali and Bengal refugee Bengal. movement. Punjabi refugee movement was concentrated in, in few months time and millions. Bengali refugee movement was in trickles, mm -hmm. you know, hope, despair, hope, despair that people will go back, people will come back like that. But 1943, you mentioned about Minal Sen yes. in the beginning, 1943 famine had a huge impact on Bengal and the rise of right, sorry, rise of left mm -hmm. can be attributed to some extent to this this right. famine of uh, 1943. Then, then the Ipta movement yes. and other I things. I think very important uh, that the took cultural place. radicals and that although, we talk about from then. CPI was banned by, by the Congress the government, government in 1948 in right. West Bengal against Nehru's wishes, right. you know. But CPI, as the influence of the communists continued, and then question came of Dandakarano settlement and. Uh, uh, was the other one, uh, uh, Andaman Nicobar settlement. Right. There are huge protest against those movements from the refugees. They didn't want to go, you know. And behind them stood the Communist Party of India, actually. Mm. I, I do not want to go into these details. They're first of, firstly, they're very complex and I cannot probably handle No, them. we also do you not know, have the time you yes, know, to actually true. talk about it. You know, we have also... But these things are very important, yes. actually. They cannot be ignored. No, it cannot understand. be ignored and it is going to be a very, very turbulent period yes. in Bengal over at least yes. over the next two years. You know, we have no. been able to understand a fair bit about the history of communalism in Bengal and also trying to understand as to what lies in the immediate rise in the last few years of the of the Hindu right in contemporary West Bengal. Uh, thank you, Professor Ghosh. You know, it's really been wonderful. We could have continued this conversation for a much longer period of time. Unfortunately, we have to wind up. Thank, Thank you very much. You know, as far as Bengal is concerned, you know, the current situation of moving towards a Hindu right, you know, this is going to sooner or later have an impact on Bangladesh politics also. Because if there is consolidation of Hindu forces, you know, it is going to be very difficult for the Bangladesh government to prevent a, a, a counter reaction or a counter mobilization in their own states. So, Situation in West Bengal and also in Bangladesh, Apar Bangla, Opar Bangla, as they say, is actually going to be very tense, and we got to keep a very close look over the next few years on this particular region. Thank you for having watched this program. We'll see, a, have another episode in a, in a few days from now. Thank you so much.